I've always been pretty suspicious about film photography. I feel like it's oftentimes used as an excuse to take just bad photos. People will take some pictures on film that aren't even that good and then spend all their time telling you about how easy it is to take a great photo using a digital camera. And they themselves don't seem to have much to say about their photos other than that they were taken using a film camera with no shortage of hashtags, captions, and bios letting you know that these images were created using analog tools. Of course, I'll never criticize the gear that someone chooses to use. I just don't think that art should be defined by the tools used to create it. And that's what's kept me away from film until a few weeks ago. So picture this, right? It's Thanksgiving break, so I'm visiting my family. Fall colors are out, fire is on, food absolutely everywhere. And I find this old film camera in a closet. Don't ask me what I was doing rummaging through my relative's closet because that's not the point. But in that process, I found this camera and it was definitely pretty old, but it seemed perfectly functional and it made me think, maybe I should actually give this film thing a try. So I stole it, but unfortunately it turns out you can't steal quite everything you need from your family. So I had to go out and get a couple other things to make this entire setup work. So let me show you those real quickly. The camera itself is a Canon AE-1. It was released by Canon back in 1976 and it's a 35 millimeter film camera. So I had to go out and find some 35 millimeter film and this is just regular Kodak color film and it's 400 speed film or 400 ISO film. Each one of these canisters is 24 exposures. So when I go out with one of these in the camera, I can take 24 pictures before I have to switch it out for another one. And finally, the part that I consider the most important is the lens in front of the camera. And this is the Canon FD 50 millimeter F1.8. And I'm really happy to be using this lens to shoot these film photos because it's very similar to the lens that I usually use on my digital camera, this 45 millimeter f1.8. Seeing as I'm using a setup that's already relatively similar to what I use with my digital camera, I decided that my goal for this video would be to go out and replicate the photos I normally take for Instagram, but using film instead of a digital camera. The only problem is that I have no idea how to use any of this stuff. To learn more about film photography and figure out what I was actually doing, I took classes about film photography on Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in filmmaking, photography, business, probably underwater basket weaving. Um, just check the site and it turns out underwater basket weaving is not available, but if you're willing to settle for above water basket weaving, then they got you covered. No matter what you're searching for, you can take as many classes in as many different categories as you'd like without having to pay for each one separately. You get all of this for less than $10 a month, making Skillshare more affordable than most similar services. And with a premium subscription, you'll get unlimited access to high quality classes by experts working in their fields to help you improve your skills and unlock new opportunities. As I mentioned before, film photography was a completely foreign concept to me, but by watching Skillshare classes about the topic, I was able to learn a lot more about how the cameras work and what techniques to use when taking photos with them. No matter what new craft or skill you're looking to learn about, I'm sure Skillshare has you covered. So make sure to check the link in the description to learn more about Skillshare and even get a two month free trial. All that being said, now that I actually know what I'm doing, let's go shoot. There are of course some major difficulties to shooting on film, namely the fact that you're mostly in the dark about what your photos actually look like. Because there's no live view or way that you can go back and look at your photos after you take them, I basically just had to rely on the camera's program mode 
to set the shutter speed automatically. To make this problem even worse, the lens I'm using stays locked at f5.6 until you take the photo, then it changes to f1.8. And the problem with that is that you can't really see what your shot is completely going to look like because this is 5.6 and this is 1.8. As you can see, there's a pretty big difference in the bokeh and depth of field. It also makes it pretty tough to focus because you don't have as much precision when seeing what that depth of field is going to do to your image. And finally, there's the obvious problem that you have limited exposures. I could only take 24 pictures on one roll of film before I had to go back and switch it out for another one. And the problem with that is not that I couldn't take as many pictures as I wanted. I usually only take a few different angles on any given shoot, but the problem with that was that I couldn't take multiple pictures from the same angle. With my digital camera, I usually just leave the setting on burst mode. So it takes five or six different pictures from each angle and I can go through and pick out the best one. All that being said, you shouldn't be worried about film being completely different from digital photography because there are plenty of continuities between the two that you can use to make your images look great regardless of which medium you're shooting on. those continuities between film and digital is lighting. If you have great lighting in your scene, your location, your photos are probably going to look pretty good no matter what you're shooting on. Composition and angles are the same way. Regardless of what you're shooting on, you can get a good composition and go the extra mile to get a really cool angle and it's going to do quite a lot for your shot. Another technique that I've been using in my film photos that I also use all the time in my digital photos is to have objects in the foreground. Most of the time that's like leaves and branches. It just really helps to give more depth to your images and it's something you can do no matter what you're shooting on. If you're curious about any of those techniques, I've made videos about them before. So if you wanna check those out, I'll link them right up there. But that being said, I've shot all 24 photos on this roll of film. So let's go get it developed. Hopefully it doesn't look like trash. So it's been a few days and I just got an email saying that the negatives have been developed and I'm about to click the link to go see what they look like digitized. My expectation is that they're just all unusable trash. Just like something went wrong, they're all like completely overexposed. We're about to click this link and find out though, I guess. Okay, well now I have to now I have to get started with Dropbox. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh -huh. I can see some of them and they're not ruined. They might be a little bright, but mm -hmm. I think the, the only two problems I'm seeing right now is that they're overexposed and they are <laughs> a little out of focus. I probably should have shot less <laughs> at f1.8. I probably should have stayed more around like three or four and the overexposure problem wouldn't be as bad. Overall, not too upset about it. As I've mentioned, my goal here was to replicate my usual photo style, and a big part of that process is editing. So I did opt to edit the film photos, but I know a lot of you aren't necessarily going to support me in that decision and would rather me have just left them completely unedited for it to be legit. So I'm going to go ahead and show you all of the completely unedited raw photos. You catch them all? Sweet, let's talk about editing. There are basically three things that aren't quite right with the images I captured. That's the exposure, the sharpness, and the grain. As I talked about before, I had some trouble focusing through the viewfinder, which resulted in some of the images not quite being perfectly in focus. And while grain is a classic feature of film photos, because I was using 400 speed film, I think it was a bit much for the situation. The fact that I was using 400 speed film in direct sunlight also resulted in most of the photos being pretty overexposed. The sharpness and the grain are both things that I can't really adjust in editing without distorting the image further, but as for the exposure, I did use a curves adjustment on a lot of the images 
to bring down the brightness of the overall shot without distorting the highlights or crushing the shadows. For most of the photos, this technique brought back all of the detail I needed to work with them, but on some of them, the skin tones were so overexposed that I was able to bring back that detail, but when I did, the colors were inaccurate. At that point, I could have fixed the skin tones in editing by masking them out on a separate layer and adjusting the colors separate from the rest of the image, but even I thought that was a bit much editing for a film photography challenge. So instead, all I did was use the hue, saturation, and lightness adjustment to shift around the hues and saturations of individual colors in the image. And what I generally do with this is desaturate the yellow and green a lot and add some more saturation into the red. And that basically just made it look like the rest of my photos. And finally, I added a slight tealish tint to the shadows on some of the images to add some more color contrast. And that was the extent of the editing I did. And there we go. That was my experience shooting on film for the very first time. I definitely did a couple things wrong. I should have used 200 speed film since I was shooting in direct sunlight and I should have closed down my aperture a bit more to something like f3.5 or f4. But in the grand scheme of things, I was pretty surprised at how much I didn't mess it up. Before I made this video, I didn't think film was my cup of tea or that it was something I would enjoy doing or be very good at doing. And after making this video, I feel pretty much the same way. I like being able to go out and document absolutely everything and I like the extra flexibility that a digital camera gives me to modify how the image looks and really perfect it to how I want it to be. That being said, it's very important to have appreciation for and try out different art forms and different styles. This was a very interesting challenge and learning experience and after doing it, I definitely have a lot more appreciation for the people who shoot like this all the time, who just live like this. And this video has also kind of further affirmed my belief that the gear you're using doesn't really have a big effect on the images you're able to create. I think a good image is a lot more about aesthetic than specifications. Aesthetic is the broader visual quality of your image as opposed to the nitty gritty details like ISO or shutter speed. And to me, the big aesthetic factors that will really have an impact on the way your image looks are your lens, your lighting, your basic camera settings, and your edit. Your choice of lens determines factors like your depth of field and perspective, things that have a much greater impact on the way your image is perceived than your camera ever will. And no matter what gear you're using, an image taken in trash lighting looks trash no matter what. Assuming you have the right lens and lighting conditions, as long as you know enough about basic camera settings and photo editing, you can create a stunning image no matter what you're shooting on. I've learned quite a bit from this experience and I feel like you could too. So if you have access to the right tools, I highly, highly encourage you to go out and try shooting some photos on film for the first time. And if you do, make sure to show them to me. My contact information is in the description. That being said, I've really enjoyed making this video and learned a lot from it. And I hope you've done the same by watching it. And if you did, do feel free to show your support by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload two new filmmaking tutorials every single week. But that's all for now. Keep creating, and I'll see you in the next one.